Russia wanted a high-speed reconnaissance attack aircraft. However, with the parallel work of the creation of an armored attack aircraft in the mid-1930s, this strange aircraft appeared, that being of the Mai Tandem, or the Tandem Mai. Whilst a lot of crazy aircraft were being developed in the 1930s, none more crazy than that of the Soviet Union's SH Tandem, which is a two-seater light attack aircraft, well, an original tandem scheme of Poitier Dmitriev Grushin, the future creator of the S-300 missile system. And with this, a tandem wing design, which allowed for two main wings, one located at the forward and the other at the rear, and both wings contribute to the lift of the overall airframe. And so this design uh, initially started as you know an experimentation on whether or not it could obtain fairly good characteristics in flight on the longitude stability. And because of its original design, its horizontal tail had an area equivalent to 45% of the wing area, which means it carried the elevators at the same time and served as the second wing in the tandem to the main one, hence the name SH Tandem. And the distribution of the payload meant that the small wingspan hindered the use of wood as the main structural material to a lesser extent, but the armament would allow for a placement of a rear machine gun. Initially, the aircraft was planned to be equipped with an M88 air-cooled engine, but since that was not ready, the M87 was put in the SH tandem, which ironically is a licensed-produced version of the French Nomron 14K aircraft engine producing 800 horsepower at 595 kilowatts, which ended production as the M85. Now, the M87 was created to further increase the output, and the cylinders and pistons were revised to increase the compression ratio, and the supercharger was also redesigned. The resulting engine had a better high altitude performance and entered production in 1938. The later variant of the M87 was also used in the Aleutian IL-4, the Sukhoi Su-2, and the Polycarpov I-180. In 1935, Grushin also launched work on a project aircraft on the tandem wing configuration. As guided by the consideration that this armament would be, and this arrangement would be the good basis for a battle aircraft with a rear turret. Installing the M87 was no mean task. In fact, it d facilitated a full redesign of the aircraft. As the small margin of the wings facilitated the use of wood as a main construction material, the same with the tandem scheme, reducing the diameter of the circle in which you can place the floor plan of the aircraft. This led to the idea of smaller vulnerability of the machines as a big advantage, considered to be also smaller on the demands and strategic materials, as well as somewhat lesser uh, technological in intensity for mass production. And by January 8th of 1939, the aircraft in a single seat version without any weapons passed its preliminary flight test with the M87 engine, which resulted in the likelihood that this was the fastest aircraft Russia had produced in 1938. With a top speed of 406 kilometers an hour at ground, at an altitude of 4,250 meters, 488 kilometers an hour. Grushin was also instructed to make a, a two-seater version to equip it with an MV5 rifle mount. And in September of 1939, a two-seater version of the SH Tandem with the M87A engine resulted in a power of about 950 horsepower at 4,700 meters. And with a variable pitch propeller, the Vish-3, under joint factory and state tests, the test report was approved on the October the 10th. And while the navigator's cockpit was shifted back and a shielded MV turret was installed and four wing-mounted Shavak machine guns with 2,400 rounds of ammunition were mounted in the wings, with one machine gun on a turret with 700 rounds of ammunition in the rear. A total of 51 test flights were performed with this particular airframe. Additionally, they also installed 200 kilograms worth of bombs during the tests, with a flight time of 18 hours and 38 minutes, and with a flight weight of 2,800 kilograms, the attack aircraft had a maximum speed on ground of 361 kilometers an hour, and at altitude 440. 44 kilometers an hour. The test pilots reported that the aircraft was very easy to operate, but the plane did not pass the state tests due to the discrepancy between the flight data and insufficient directional stability when speeds increased. That wasn't the only problem, it had a cramped navigator's cabin. 
an unsuccessful landing gear which failed often, and insufficient strength of the front wing. Plus, the takeoff of the plane was actually quite difficult, and the plane reacted sluggishly to the rudders. It was believed that the excess of the rear wing over the front was not a very good decision. The armament was also undelivered since the MV3 turret mount actually took away 34 kilometers an hour of the flight speed. The M87 engine also caused many problems. For example, the BB-1 series was almost closed after reading reports of the operation of the first production vehicles, as the engines were woefully underpowered and often overheated in mid-level flight. So there were much more problems with the SH tandem than it seemed in Soviet aviation literature. And at the same time they canned the BB-1 project, the Moscow Institute of Aviation also decided to bring a hammer down on the tandem my project. Learning from the experiences ultimately delivered from this Spanish Civil War had shown that main losses of Soviet aviation were weak engines contributing to engine fires. And from what I can find here on the archives, it suggests that there was a new doctrine put in place for a heavier, more reliable type of aircraft designation and structure. This was initiated in May of 1939, and as a result, many aircraft companies took to this new designation type to make aircraft like the I. Too. Unfortunately for the tandem project, unusual layout and the rather weak armament did its job and in May 1939 they decided to stop work on the tandem for good. Now I have a couple of books on this one, although they're in PDF format. Uh, the History Designs of the Planes in the USSR 1938-1950 by Vadim Sharov and The Transformer Engineer Grushin by Andrei uh, Averin. And these provided particularly tricky to translate into English, so I'm sorry if this video seems a little abrupt. Anyway, subscribe for more!